When I was little, we took our first trip to spend the holidays with my dad's family in Costa Rica. All of us were going, even my little sister. I couldn't wait. For all of my short years, I had grown up listening to my dad and grandpa Ernesto talk about this exotic world where parrots and monkeys lived. It sounded like the whole country was like a zoo where all the animals lived free. I couldn't wait. My sister and I even had our very own passports. I had never been on an airplane before. This trip was going to be a big deal. We were going to another country. Nobody I knew had ever been to another country, and I was going. I was going to be a world traveler. My Aunt Bibi was working on a project trying to help the macaws that live there. She always came back to see us and tell us about all the exciting things that happened there. Now, I, too, was going to Costa Rica. I was so excited. The trip itself was not what I expected. We had to wait a really long time in line. Mommy told me that it was because we were traveling internationally and they had to check our passports. I watched as people looked for their passports in their bags. Why didn't they have them ready when there was so much time standing there in line to get them? Mommy told me to be patient. And then we had to take our shoes off and put everything in these trays. I watched and waited as the people before us took off their shoes and put their things in trays. Why didn't they take off their shoes and get ready before it was their turn? They knew they were going to have to do this if they did it before their turn came up. That would make things go so much quicker. I wondered if we were going to miss the plane. Daddy told me to be patient. And then we walked to our boarding gate, and we waited for our plane to arrive. And we waited, and we waited. Where was our plane? Mommy told me to be patient. Finally, our airplane was ready. Then we had to wait for our turn to board. The people in first class boarded first. Why? They sat in the front of the plane. It would make more sense to let the people in the back of the plane board first. Mommy told me to be patient. Finally, it was our turn to board the plane. Walking on the plane was exciting at first, and then I saw all the people putting their bags in the places over the seats. We would never be able to get to our seats. Why didn't these people just check their bags or put them under their seats? Their bags were the same size as ours. This was going to take forever. Daddy told me to be patient. I rolled my eyes. We were never going to get to Costa Rica. Finally, we sat down. I got to sit by the window. My sister, Ernesto, was upset because she wanted to sit next to the window. She spent part of the trip looking out the window, leaning over me. It made no sense because she was afraid of falling out of the window. I started to say something, but then I saw Mom looking over at me. I know, be patient. And we were flying. It was the coolest thing in the world to look down and see the ocean and land below us. When we landed, we had to wait for the people to get their bags out of the spaces above us. If those people hadn't had so many big bags, this would take a lot less time. I know, be patient. And finally, we were off the plane. We went to collect our luggage from the cool carousel thing. Ernesto and I wanted to climb on it and go for a ride, but Mommy and Daddy held us back. And finally, we were on our way. We were meeting up with my grandparents at their house down at the beach on the Caribbean side. I had never seen the Caribbean Sea. I had never seen a sea. I had only seen oceans. I didn't know what the difference was, but it sounded exciting. The car drive seemed like it took forever. My sister and I often asked, Are we there yet? And our parents seemed to always say, Be patient. It was hard to be patient as we watched the changing landscape. It was amazing. We saw waterfalls and tropical flowers just growing alongside the road. It was really hard to be patient. When we finally arrived in Cocles and Grandpop's house, it was so different. 
I could hear all sorts of strange new sounds. I saw a lizard with a sail just like a tiny dinosaur. We went into the house which only had screen windows. The house was made of wood. I had to share a room with my little sister. The beds all had nets over them. I wondered what those were for. We were right near a beach. Awesome. It was getting dark early. Daddy said it was because we were close to the equator, and so there was pretty much equal time between day and night. And that was fine because we were tired and went to bed early. The night was filled with all sorts of sounds that I had never heard. My sister, Ernesto, turned on the light and squealed. I opened my eyes and noticed a giant lizard with floppy feet on the wall. He was really cool. There was also bugs stuck to our nets. That's what they were for, to let us sleep without bugs. Ernesto said she wanted to go home. I was excited. If that many animals were running around at night, what would we see during the day? The next morning, we woke suddenly to the loudest noise that I had ever heard. My sister started to cry. I ran outside to see if it was a jaguar, just like Aunt Bibi had seen. But it was only a little monkey. He was all black and brown. It was a howler monkey, just like on the TV nature shows that we had watched at home. I ran in and grabbed Ernesto, who was still whimpering, and I led her outside and showed her the monkey. She stopped crying and started laughing. That was just the beginning of our adventure. We went bird watching every day. We played on the beach every day. We went surfing. We saw my favorite Aunt Bibi every day. Aunt Bibi showed us around her research station, and she showed us the great green macaws and how amazing they were. I decided that they were my favorite bird in the world. It wasn't just because they were my favorite color. They were just so amazing to watch. I decided that I would like to be an ornithologist when I grew up, and I wanted to work with Bibi. That was my favorite part of the trip. That was only the first time that I had traveled to the country where my dad's family were from, but it would not be the last. I fell in love with that country. I couldn't wait to get back there. I was sad when we went home, but I was hoping to go back. I also was a lot more patient with the other travelers on the way home. Yes, on that trip I learned about patience. But I also learned that there were a lot more important things in life than what can be bought at a store. I learned to love experiences, especially the ones that required patience. Those are the best. Thank you for watching. Please click on my right to subscribe if you like the video. And don't forget to click on the bell icon when you subscribe so that you can be notified when we upload a new video. Watch more videos on the left, including our playlist. And thank you again.